what we what we covered in the last class we have deployed a distributed okay. switch at vcenter level and added the host into the distributed switch and what we did we have a couple of workloads that are running on standard switch right those are linux whatever these workloads we have migrated them onto distributed switch without any downtime this we tested and one more scenario what we discussed these migrations and stuff okay but in which situation you can do normally when you're trying to upgrade your existing network from 1 gb network to a 10 gb network means if this is 1 gb network where the standard switch is configured and you got the new distributed switch along with the upgraded license along with the upgraded hardware or network hardware i'll say and you want to migrate everything over the 10 gb network so in this situation also you will do the migration in bulk this is what we tested okay so a couple of more scenarios on this uh one thing what we discussed is can we create a multiple kernel ports on ESXi host or not? Can we create multiple kernel ports on ESXi host or not? I've shown you in the previous sessions. We can create it. Right? So I have created a couple of kernel ports. Okay. So far what we did, we have migrated the machines from standard network to distributed network means from standard port groups to distributed port groups we migrated now i want to migrate the kernel ports as well how to do the kernel ports migrations we'll see means let me clear this off i have one host i have one host just a moment Okay, I have one host where I have one kernel port and one port group, two different switches. One is used for kernel port and one is used for port, port groups. And I have created one distributed switch for port groups. Now I have two kernel ports here. Imagine. Can I create at multiple kernel ports on the same switch? Yes, we can create. So I want to migrate one of the kernel port from here to here. I want to do that. Let's see. But we are not going to achieve anything by doing this. Okay, because when you are creating a kernel port or when you are doing a kernel port migration means you are touching each and every host manually because each and every host has a kernel port. And you need to go to the each host and do the manual work. You need to assign IP, all these things, right? So that you are not going to minimize or in, in terms of administration, you are not going to minimize any manual work. Okay. Only thing is distributed switch also supports a kernel port. And also you can run your uh, couple of workloads over the distributed switch. Let's say what all the things that kernel port can do. I've shown you around five or six different tasks that kernel port can do management, okay, and uh, vMotion, vSAN, HA, right, uh, FT logging, and so on, right? Some, some of these things that kernel port will do. Okay, now. I want to migrate one of the kernel port from here to here. How to do that? Let's see. So first of all, let me go to any switch. Configure switches. Standard switch. We have only one kernel port. Can I add one more kernel port on this? Or let's do kernel adapter i'll add one kernel adapter to the 
existing switch fine okay em kernel 2 is for this purpose management only and use ipv4 settings these things you have to manually perform right 150 because you cannot do all these things at distributed switch level so what i'll do ping 192 168 30.150 there's nothing if you look at there's nothing so let me go to ping finish and you see started pinging now you are accessing kernel port over 0 and 1 this second kernel port right so th this is communicating via like this okay now what i want to do i want to migrate this kernel port from standard switch to distributed switch standard switch to distributed switch how to do that let's go to networking distributed switch right click Add a manage host, manage host networking. Next, added host, first host. Right, next. Now you see a couple of options manage kernel adapters, manage physical adapters, manage virtual machine networking, manage kernel adapters. Next. So this kernel adapter, this kernel adapter, I want to migrate. Okay, assign a port group. It is on VLAN 30. Actually, I created with the DB VLAN. Okay, but I have to rename it first. Let me rename in such a way. DB VLAN 30, edit settings. I will do management VLAN 30 because my, all my hosts are running on VLAN 30. So I just rename the port group just for my understanding. So my, again, manage host networking, add host. Next, I want to manage the kernels kernel 1 which is assign management VLAN now it is going to migrate onto this understood okay so before that let me ping 192 168 30.150 it's pinging. So I'm migrating onto distributed port group. Right back. Finish. See, it's still functioning. There's no, there's no ping lost. Now, if you go to host switch zero, it's gone here. And if you go to distributed switch. And on VLAN 30, management VLAN 30, there is a kernel port here. You see 150. Now it is communicating via distributed switch. But you are not going to achieve anything because each and every kernel port you have to migrate manually. If you have 1000 hosts, all the 1000 kernel ports you have to migrate like this. Okay, or else can we do one thing? Uh, let me delete this kernel adapter. One. Okay, I've deleted the kernel adapter. Okay, so what I will do? Um, let's do one thing. For kernels, I have a three different host, right?
have three different host right so all the host have two to empty ports so we'll do one one thing we'll create a kernel port on the empty ones on the empty ones and what i will do i have distributed switch as well last one is distributed switch right so VLAN 10 20 30 is there VLAN 50 let me check do different scenarios <clears throat> 1.100 VLAN 50 is there no we'll use VLAN 50 okay so I'll use VLAN 50 on each host let me do this new kernel adapter okay I want to create a new switch on each host remember and I have two empty cables. I'll take the I'll take both the cables and V motion. This this will be used for V motion, VLAN 50, V motion. Next. So 192.168.50.51. 50.51 is the IP. And override 50.1 is the gateway. Don't forget. Finish. Let's see. New switch has been created with VLAN ID 50 and IP is 51. So let's try pinging 50.51. It's pinging. Okay. Now 50.52. Let's see. It is not pinging. Okay, so go to second host and add networking kernel adapter new switch on the second host I'm doing it and use two cables next again it's V motion only okay and V motion VLAN ID 50 what is the IP 192 168 50.52 guys getting it what i'm trying to establish on the second host see started pinging okay and go to third host there is no second standard switch so let me create a kernel port new switch Another two free cables in motion. motion. Next, what is IP one ninety two one sixty eight fifty dot fifty three and gateways fifty dot one is the gateway. So in all the three hosts, I have created a new switch and new switch with with name vMotion and one kernel port. Means in all the three hosts, I have a new kernel port called vMotion that will be used for vMotion going forward. Just just for an example. Okay. Now everything is running on standard switch, standard switch. So I want to migrate all the kernel ports which are belongs to v motion from standard switch to distributed switch reason reason recollect the previous example i have one gb network on a standard switch and second option is 10 gb network in distributed switch so if i bring from standard switch to net distributed switch okay what what i'm achieving the, those v motion kernel ports will start communicating from 1 GB network to 10 GB network means the speed will be 10 times faster than the existing network. 
but I don't want to interrupt anything. If I want to do the live migration, how to do that? Let's see. So go to distributed switch. Guys, following any 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 confusion? Let me know. Vivek. No, sir. Sunil? Yes, sir. Sunil, following, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So I want to create. Is there any VLAN 50? There, is there any port group that belongs to VLAN 50? No, right? So you need to create new distributed port group here. <coughs> I'll say this will be used for vMotion only. Okay. And how many ports? 128. Example and VLAN. What is the VLAN ID? 50. Next, finish. So there is a, oh my God. Let me edit settings. Motion VLAN 50. Just for our standard naming convention. Okay. Understood. So this this port group will be used to send the kernel port data out using two uplinks only. There's no other uplinks, only existing two uplinks. Okay. Now how to do the migration? Right click, add and manage host. Manage host networking. Next, attach all the host. Now you are you are trying to manipulate all the three hosts. What you are trying to manipulate? Physical adapters or virtual machines or kernel ports? I want to manipulate or manage kernel ports. Next, you see each has two two kernel ports. You see one is v, one is vMotion, another one is management network. I don't want to touch the management network. Let's leave the management network in standard switch only. So let's bring the vMotion into a distributed switch because management you log in log off right click left click and right click create vm and go to logs you will view and just just few few mouse clicks you will perform via management network means you are not going to send huge data over the management network very rarely you will send means the management network is fine to run on one gb network but vmotion is migrating virtual machine from one host to another host without any downtime. Okay, uh, the VM size is one TB. Now you are migrating VM from one host to another host and the RAM size is 32 GB RAM. Okay, so you need a faster network or not? So if you want to migrate the existing VM from one host to another host over the uh, kernel port called vMotion, you need a faster network. So company has decided to upgrade from one GB network to 10 GB network. Now the existing kernel ports, the vMotion kernel ports are configured over one GB with standard switch or standard switch. So now the plan is to migrate all the kernel ports which are running on standard switch, switch one, v switch one to distributed switch. On the distributed switch, there is a dedicated port group called vMotion that is VLAN 50. Okay, so let's assign for this kernel port, I need to assign destination port group from where? From vMotion kernel port to dis destination port group motion VLAN 50. This has been assigned. And for this, assign vMotion port group. This has been assigned. For, for third host, assign vMotion assign. So all the three kernel ports will migrate from source port group vMotion to destination vMotion VLAN 50, which is on distributed switch. This is on stand switch. Next, no iSCSI configured, finish.
that's it now you can ping any of this it's pinging it's pinging right three of them are pinging no downtime nothing so if you go back and go to switch switch zero is nothing it become empty because you migrated the kernel port from this switch to distributed switch under vmotion kernel port 53 understood yes okay so now you are free to remove the switch this switch is no longer required again you free up the two physical cables this is how you migrate your kernel ports from standard switch to distributed switch got it If I want to migrate back, how to? It's a bit tricky. Let's try. Host networking. I want to migrate back to standard switch. But one host will try. I never tried it in real time, but let's try here. Kernel adapters. Okay. There's no option to select any standard. Any standard. There's no option to select any standard network. All right. So the only option is you have to go back to individual host, add networking, kernel adapter. Next, select the existing network. And let me try this. Next, you're creating it now. Existing network, my motion. Next, let me my motion. Creating now. This is not should not create. Cancel. Select the switch. not showing up the standard one okay man the options gone here normally you have a migrate kernel port like this let me check this out kernel adapters let's see here 30 not 51 okay and this one layer 50.1 static IP fine add it adapter okay switch zero next adapter no 
let me try this is not going to work no man there's no option i didn't see option but i'll have to figure it out to migrate back it's a bit tricky option let me see if there is anything one last try okay Send port groups only the distributed port groups are showing up. Okay, but I might need another adapter another switch and stuff which i'm really not sure okay let's mark this aside migrating back i'm failure okay so this is one thing we tested today one more thing there's another concept called so i have migrated from here to here from standard to distributed but distributed to standard is not visible that I'll have to figure it out, but I never seen the situations where you migrated back. Okay, but it should be there somewhere. Some tricky options we need to do, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure it out. If, it, if I found fine, otherwise it's okay. It's not a big deal. Okay, but there is another concept here. Nice following. Understood what I'm trying to explain here. Yes. There is another concept called okay let's take this example i have one virtual machine okay and can i assign two network cards to machine can I assign two network cards to a machine virtual machine i'm talking about yes, physical yes. server how many nick cards you can assign i said based on the requirement you can add up to 16 physical NIC cards, right? Similarly, there is there is a virtual machine, and it has two it has two adapters: 192, 168, 30 dot, sorry, 10 dot, 51 is production okay and i want to assign another ip 192 168 60.51 okay what is the purpose what is the purpose backup you know have you have you seen the configurations normally you'll, you'll take a backup of your virtual machine over different network and send it to some different destination server you'll have a backup server 192 168 60.2 is the server example okay and customer is using this server and this go to vpn and customer will use like this so same machine customer will come and use like this and if you want to take a backup of c drive backup of d drive backup of e drive that data goes via like this but the problem is you cannot assign 
gateway to two different NICs. You have already assigned gateway 10.1 to this IP. For this, you cannot assign gateway. Only, only you can do is you can have a subnet assigned and you need to have static route. Okay, you need to add a static route. How to? Let's see. See, there's a syntax route add so and so address, submit mask, so and so gateway, and the matrix. You need to add like this. Okay, if you want to check the routes, route print. You see, these are the default routes configured on this host. So, this persistent route, there's nothing called persistent route here. You need to add a persistent route if you add a second NIC card to this machine. Okay, remember. Now, there is a concept called concept called private VLAN. Okay, let's see what it is. VMware, if I go to images, okay, see, there's an image called, there is one host, or there's, there are some, some VMs, which you are putting on VLAN 500, okay, these VMs are running on VLAN 500, you can create, the, the, this is, this you call it as promiscuous, where the actual traffic will go to routers or a firewalls, okay, now you can create one more isolated VLAN called 501. 501 means these VMs cannot talk to each other, but these VMs can talk to this. And one more secondary private VLAN, 502, and the community VMs. These VMs can talk to together and cannot talk to isolated VMs. And can talk to primary private VLAN. Means in this picture he explained well, but the scenario is something like this. Something like this. Let me draw a simple picture. Let's see if we are able to test it well and good. Otherwise, it's fine. At least I'll explain in theory. Okay, I said boss, there is a concept called backup. So you have a backup server everything in one data center i'm talking about okay there is a backup server okay and you have one vm you have another vm and you have another vm you have another vm so take these two or in community VLAN, community private VLAN, and take these two VMs or on isolated VLAN, okay? Reason is, I said two cables will be there or two, I said two network cards will be there for each machine. Listen carefully. Can I do that? Possible? Yes. So this side, these cables are connected to some switch. Imagine virtual switch or a physical that further goes to physical switch and further goes to here you have a virtual switch, right? On each each VM is go and connect to some virtual switch. That virtual switch in turn connected to physical switch this physical switch in turn connected to vpn customer is using four machines are responding fine there is no topic of private vlan on the front side this is on the front side on the back side i have one more nic card on the each machine and i put it on private vlan called 60 under 61 
61 okay and private vlan called 62 and actually this server is sitting on vlan 60 this server is 60, sitting on vlan 60 what is the vlan 60 ip 60.1 to 60.254 means my vlan 60 is dedicated for backup purpose remember so if i create a vlan private vlan 61 with isolated this vm can send a traffic to this and this vm can send a traffic to this means for this you have to assign one ip for this you have to assign one ip this this ip and this ip can ping this ip means 60.2 is the ip for this machine can i send 60.2 for this machine yes and <clears throat> 60.3 is the ip for this machine 60.4 is the ip for this machine forget about front end front end 10.61 10.21 30.2 5 80.99 whatever the front end ip customer is using i'm not bothered about all these things on the back end 60.3 60.4 60.3 everything is on <clears throat> one vlan only right everything is on one vlan agree if i if i send a packet it should broadcast across vlan agree or disagree yes i agree okay <clears throat> I'm sorry, but these two machines, these two machines cannot talk to each other. 60.3 can ping 60.2, 60.4 can ping 60.2, but 60.3 cannot ping 4, 60.4 cannot ping 60.3 because both are in isolated VLAN. Understood? That is the meaning of isolated similarly I'll, I'll i'll create one more vlan called community vlan and i'll say 60.5 ip to this 60.6 ip to this and these two also can send a traffic to this and these two can talk to each other and these two cannot talk to this if 6.4 want to talk to 6.5 no sorry three sorry but 5 and 6 okay 4 and 6 no sorry understood if you want to establish these kind of these kind of securities in place you can use private vlan within the within the data center distributed switch not the data center okay so how to create a private vlan i'll show you go back distributed switch right click <clears throat> new port group new port group backup pvlan private vlan 60 understood next 254 ip addresses private vlan VLAN is not configured for this distribution switch. Okay, fine. No, no. Configure switch. Private VLAN. Edit. Add private VLAN. What is the private VLAN ID? 60. And add. What is the community VLAN ID? 61. Add. What is the isolated VLAN ID? 62. Put isolated. Understood? Okay. Private VLAN, private VLAN is configured. Hmm? Now, go and create port group. Backup. Backup underscore 
PVLAN 60. Next, private VLAN. Fifty-four. Next, finish. So backup private VLAN. Sixty has been created. What I will do? I will create one more port group. Backup private VLAN sixty-one. Next. And I should not put to for it's okay. Private VLAN 61 community port group. Okay, and one more backup underscore bit tricky part. So try to concentrate 62. I should not give this many ports, it's okay. Let's do it. Private VLAN 62 isolated. So let's do the isolated VLAN testing. So what I will do, I will go to virtual machine. I will take ESX host one uh, or host three, host three and VMs. What all the VMs we have? Seven, eight, nine. Seven I will put on promiscuous and eight and nine, I'll put on isolated. Understood? Right click, edit settings, seven, eight, nine. More VLANs, backup, 60. 60 is promise case. Nine and edit settings. Second VM on 62. Edit settings. Sixty two. Okay. Let me power on three of them. Okay, so open console sixty billion, right? One ninety two, one sixty eight, sixty dot two is the IP, one sixty dot one is the gateway. Right. Let me go to terminal. Let me see. Hello, one sixty eight, sixty dot one. No VLAN configured, man. Six dot gateway itself is not pinging. Okay, let's do one thing. Nothing to worry.
50.2 it's not pending let me go to switch edit It's okay. It is already being in use, you cannot modify it. Edit settings. Done 50. Done. If you look at it, uh, one second. Let me modify one thing first. Edit. I'll make this as 50. Bond group Let me do one thing. Let me power off this quickly. <clears throat> Something a bit, a bit high level networking, or I can say tricky networking concepts you will not use it in your basic day-to-day -day administration but let's try if it works well very good still it won't respond to us something somewhere I'm doing a mistake okay fine it not allowing me let's wash out and now let's try Okay, let me wash out this as well. Settings. Okay, now go to here, shifting, 51, 
it is now configured okay now let me create distributed code groups backup 50 here i'll say private vlan 50 okay one private vlan is created let me go back and assign to this backup 50 okay for on and let me test this for one machine if it is working then we'll continue with the others rather than testing too many things okay so control panel network 192, 168, 50.2, 50.1, 2, 168, 50.1, it's pinging. In mobile.com. Okay, I think sending data to internet is not allowed on this VLAN. It's okay, not an issue. Ping 192, 168, 50.3. So for now, 50.3 is not pinging. What I will do next machine? Okay, edit settings. I'll put it on isolated VLAN, which is 52. So for 52, I haven't created the code group. Let me go to code group, create a code group for isolated VLAN. Backup underscore 52. Understood? Private VLAN, isolated. Finish. So now, edit settings on the 8th VM. to assign okay or on open console okay now control panel 192, 168, 50.3, 50.1. No, if I'm doing a mistake, I'm really not sure, but I'm just trying myself. See, it started pinging. Right, 50.3. Now, in this, let's try to ping. Terminal ping sorry ping 192 168 50.2 50 .2. 50 from 50.3 50.2 is also pinging both the sides now let's do one more thing go to ninth machine go to ninth machine and which one which VLAN we should assign here isolated only go back to the picture Two VMs in isolated VLAN, replace 60 with 50, 50, 50.2. Imagine this is your backup server, 50.2. From 50.2, pinging. From 50.3, pinging. From 50.4, it should ping back, but these two should not ping. That is what we need to test. Understood? Both are in isolated VLAN, 52. Power on. Open console. Where 
that is graphics is really Second, strange graphics. One ninety two, one sixty eight, fifty dot two. Okay, so for that, what I have to do, go to full screen. Network one ninety two, one sixty eight, fifty dot four, right? Anyway, internet is not working, only to assign IP. So now, terminal. See, it is now able to send it to 50.2. 50.3, it should not ping. Because 50.3 and 50.4 or on isolated VLAN. You got my point? What I'm trying to show you? Go to the picture. Okay. 50.3, 50.4 are on isolated VLAN called 52, and actual VM is on 50, uh, actual server is on uh, promiscuous VLAN 50, and 50 dot 2 and 3 are pinging 50 dot 2 and 4 are pinging and from 3 to 2 is pinging from 4 to 2 is pinging but 3 and 4 cannot talk to each other because both are on related VLAN called 52 you got my point yes hmm? if you want you can see in the scenario see 50 dot 2 to 3 it's pinging dot two it's pinging fifty dot three from three from three I'm pinging four it's not pinging and from four I'm pinging from four I'm pinging three it's not pinging but if I cancel and if I ping two it's working if from can I will cancel I'll ping gateway it's not working because the promiscuous gateway is only two it can send only data to two from two, from two, you can ping the gateway as well. Let's see. From 50.2, go to 50.2. This is 50.2, right? So cancel. So I can ping 50.3. I can ping 50.4. I can ping 50.1. It's working. Okay. Now go back to the picture. Go back to the Google picture where we have seen. Okay. See. From us, yes, 500 treat as a 50. Okay, from 50, from 50, you can send a data to external. So 50.1 is somewhere here. 50.2 is this. 50.3 and 4 are these two. Sorry, sorry, isolated. These two. You want me to draw notation? Okay, so this VM 50.2 and it can send data to gateway 50.1 and treat this as backup 50. Okay, and this is backup 52. Backup 52 and this is this IP is 50.3. And this IP is 50.4. So 3 and 4, there's no ping. And 
50.3 and 2, 50.3 and 2, yes, they can ping, see, this one, this green mark, okay, and from 50.3, you can send it to data 50.2, from 50.4, you can send data to 50.3, but from 50.3, you cannot send it to 4, this is what we tested, understood? Yes. Any, 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 any questions? Bit high level, it's okay. When, whenever you feel like you want to implement it, you can refer it. But uh, there are a lot of things that you can do inside the distributed switch, but we will not go too much inside. Okay, you'll get confused. So I hope you understood what, all, what all the things we covered so far in last five or six sessions during the network testing or if you have any specific questions or if you have any specific scenarios you want to you want me to explain please let me know configuration steps you can watch the video i have made a lot of changes because 60 is not configured properly on my physical switch so that's the reason why i've tried to but 60 should not be the, i mean even the 60 is there or not it's fine because if if the switch uh, configuration is not there still you can try using isolated vlans and community vlans only thing is promiscuous vlan you cannot test it that's a different story okay so any questions i might have made some mistakes on this private vlan because i never implemented in my uh, customer environment so far it's okay but we tested it at least 50 percent Okay, yeah, guys, questions? No? Yes? Few? Have to revise? You want to revisit no, the videos? Let me check the uh, video and then. <laughs> yeah, I sure. Lost too much. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah. some, some, con some, confusion, some confusion is there in uh, configuration, that's why. <laughs> There's no confusion. If you look at this picture, okay, I told you the scenario. I I I I understand scenario. Oh. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. If you look at this picture, I have four production production virtual machines. Each has front end network. Each has back end network. So back end network, I've seen. I've seen. You know separate picture and front end as it is customer is using there's no impact front end is working fine because they have a different nick cards can i use yes. multiple nick cards to the machine yes you can use yes. only thing is you cannot assign the gateways that's it okay clear we can we can build some some more real time scenarios on top of this but you'll get confused Okay, so just just imagine because this is one backup server which is used to dump the data. So every every server's data is dumped over here via these cables. So once it is dumped, it will replicate it to another DC, DC2. This is DC1. That comes under disaster recovery and stuff. I'll explain when we discuss about the backup and recovery and disaster recovery as well. But we will use these kind of network topologies to implement backups, especially, or some more scenarios are there, okay, if you want to implement private VLAN. Clear? Yes. All right, yeah, let me stop here. Okay, oh, so I'm sorry, I forgot. So tomorrow, what we will do is, Tomorrow we'll start with start with storage. So I want to understand OK, 
okay if you want as well as Anika. storage protocols this thing you you can refer what it is how it works and all okay that we will discuss from tomorrow onwards again storage will take around six to seven sessions okay So let me stop here. We'll catch up tomorrow, same time.